Welcome back to Empire Homestead, and today we're going to talk about growing things. We're going to check in on where I'm at on the Lang John pumpkins and go over the garden and look at a couple other things. see here I'm well on my way to uh, planting chickens and turkeys uh, ducks don't want to come over here and be part of this so this is where I'm at on my pumpkin pasture right now uh, I call it pasture it's pumpkin patch uh, this is the first hole that we dug and I finally got it filled up the top of the box but I still need to come up higher and take it out uh, chickens and turkeys keep digging it all out so I've tilled this uh, patch uh, multiple times and uh, today I got a little bit of uh, alfalfa pellet in it for nitrogen, uh, eggshell for calcium, and we got some perlite in there. This is what I set up for water. Uh, we talked about needing 100 gallons of water a day. This is 110 gallons, but I can probably only get 100 gallons out of it. And you see down there in the bottom, they put the drain on that. I'm planning on putting a hose on the front of this. They put the drain on that like two inches above the bottom so you can't get all the water out of it but uh i got two of these set up one here and one on the other end so you remember this hole here uh so it was like a 15 minute video but it literally took me all day long to dig this hole and get it filled in but this one down here i did in about 15 minutes let's go take a look at it get out of here all right now that is a proper pumpkin hole and it's probably a little bit deeper than what I was shooting for, I think. And I still need to put my layers in here. Layers of straw, compost, um, soil. And I was going to really push to do that today because we're expecting some rain tomorrow. But I decided I wanted to be able to look, on, uh, look in here and see how it drains. So I'm going to leave it be and come back to that next week. And we got another watering trough set up right here. This one's also 100 uh, gallons. And this is, uh, both of these came out of the pig pastures where we had them set up for the wintertime watering. And back here where you see all the chickens and turkeys are digging in, I tilled up a stretch back there. And I'm going to come through and get rid of all the grass from there to the fence. And I'm going to put sunflowers back there. And I did check, and sunflowers are a companion to uh, pumpkins. But I wasn't overly concerned about it because they're not really going to share the same nutrients in the soil over there as they will from here. Uh, that, that ground hasn't been modified or even turned up that much. Buddy, please. Um, but we've got some sunflower seeds and we need to get them planted. And I thought that would be a good place for it. My intent is that when this thing is uh, filled with two big giant pumpkins and at the end of the season all the sunflowers should be back there in the back and it'll make a pretty picture and the sunflower seeds will uh, feed all these birds for a portion of the winter time but yeah this pumpkin hole that i dug here i did that in about 15 minutes and i did it with this so that certainly made the job way easier and Man, I wish I'd had it for that first hole. Right, still a little early for gardening. Um, I did do a couple of things. And I still got my mess here from yesterday, too. I need to get cleaned up. This is where the greenhouse used to be. It was one of those, uh, you can see there, arch style. and had a cover that goes over top of it. And for second year in a row, I didn't prioritize getting the cover off of it before winter time. And wind tore it up. I still have it. It's got a lot of tears and stuff, and it probably won't be suitable for uh, putting back on here, but I think I am going to use it to make some hoop houses for my uh, pumpkins. All right, so here's my potato tower. And we talked about the potatoes the other day, and I got them planted in here. So I got a uh, straw, dirt, straw, dirt all the way up, and pumpkins around, I'm <laughs> stuck on pumpkins. Uh, red potatoes all around the rings. 
and I wanted to do this on video too, but again, I ran out here and did it real quick in the middle of uh, fairing piglets, so it didn't make it on video. But there it is, and I'm excited to see what this is going to produce, and it definitely looks good once I clean up my trash out of here and get the garden cleaned up. I haven't even started cleaning up the garden from last year yet, and uh, I need to do that. All right, this is my strawberry bed, and uh, some of these strawberries are in their fourth year, and some are in their second year. And uh, I transplanted all of them into here last year, and you know, strawberries take a good four to five years to establish really well. So they are just now getting going for the season, and I did come through here weed yesterday and gave them some water. So strawberries should do a lot better this year. Blueberries, I got two blueberries. I actually have four in here, and the other two have disappeared. These were only second year plants, so I'm not expecting much out of them. They do have a lot of buds on them. And uh. All right, cabbage in the ground yesterday, and I'm going to have to come through here and do some chicken mitigation because they just tore them to pieces. These have been on the back deck for about two weeks now. I've been waiting for the frost to go away. And see, they completely dug them out here. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do some chicken work on that. And here's all, let's see, we did romas and those last year. I did other for, uh, indeterminate tomatoes in my arch. I'm not doing those in the arch this year. I'm going to do fall squash in the arch. But still need to clean up last year's tomato mess. This was peppers last year. This year's onions. And I got red onions in here. And the daggone turkeys did come through here and dig up a bunch of them. But I was able to save them. And they're doing decent. I quit fooling with onions a couple years ago because they just doesn't seem like they ever get that big. But I've recently become a fan of uh, pickled red onions, so I'm trying to grow red onions. While we're over here, you remember last year's pumpkin patch? We had three Atlantic Giants in this. So a huge difference from what we had last year to what you saw just now, what we're going to do this year. So I reached out to some groups on Facebook that um, I'm a member of about growing giant pumpkins and asked what to do about this. And that was on day 10, I think. And some people said, give it a few more days, which I did. And some people said to plant another seed immediately. And uh, some people told me I was doing things wrong. And uh, the, I, I'm definitely here to learn uh, how to do things. I don't want to be resistant to uh, negative feedback. But I don't really understand how things wrong has got me to here on all these. So I just kind of moved on from that. The biggest thing, somebody commented specifically that this wouldn't work if I didn't have them on a uh, heat pad. And, you know, the seed is in the very top of here, just barely in the soil. And I don't understand how the heat pad heats 10 quarts of uh, soil all the way up to here to heat that uh, seed and get it to germinate. I do have them in here with a heat lamp. And... And I think it's doing a, a good enough job of that. So, I have to plant another seed. And uh, let's find the seed that I picked. Alright, so I have gone with the 1152 Casper. And the reason I did is because of its parents. It has, uh, its parents are both over 2,000 pounds. One over 2,500 and one just under 2,500. And another reason I picked this is because pumpkins are for Halloween and Casper is a Halloween thing, right? So I went with this seed. So I'm going to file the edges on this and get it in here and give it a little bit of water and try a second go with this. All right, a little bit of water. I uh, gave it warm water, not hot water, just warm water. Uh, I don't want to cook it. And I don't want it to be too cold. So this is the seed that was the 1864 voice. And you kind of see here that it didn't make it. Uh, one person on the groups that I was asked about told me to pull it out and check it. And I did that. And it looked like it was springing some roots out of it. And I put it back in. And curiosity got the better of me. And I pulled it out again today. And... This is what's inside of it. So it was definitely not doing anything. And that's disappointing. But okay. 
it's all right we have a backup plan uh, now we have the 1152 Casper uh, with uh, really nice parents and I will pull this 1864 card off of here and start me a new one and record all the information on this Casper All right, so there are those, and uh, I need to still make another card for that, but I put my seed pack in here. I know what I got there. And while we are in here, I transplanted my tomatoes the other day, and these are all Baker's Creek heirloom seeds. Here we got Romas, Martino's Romas, and they look a lot better than they were looking when I got home from work today. A few of them are struggling, not going to make it, but I plant more here than what I really want. I think we're going to be okay. Um, this guy right here, something that volunteered in the uh, compost. Not quite sure what it is, but I'm going to let it grow and find out. Same thing here. I think this is some sort of squash or something. And it was seed bound, and I got the shell off of it. And I think I damaged it a little bit. But it's, it's still alive. And hopefully we'll find out what that is, too. I thought it looked like a watermelon seed, but I'm not 100% sure. And then these are also, these are all Baker Creek heirloom seeds. Uh, these are the Jersey Devils. Last year I bought two packs of Jersey Devil seeds. I planted them all. They all sprouted. They were outside in the greenhouse. And a late freak frost came through and killed them all. So hopefully this year's batch is going to give us some nice Jersey Devil tomatoes. And then mortgage lifters. And one of these I want to try and grow a giant tomato out of. And these are also Baker Creek. Um, you can go to the home page of my YouTube and I got some uh, uh, channels there and it's labeled channels that I like to learn from and Baker's Creek is one of them and uh, they do a neat little thing called seed stories and they tell about uh, seeds and where they came from and uh, what they do with the fruits and vegetables that come from them and uh, you can buy seeds uh, from Baker's Creek on rareseeds.com get on there in order to do your catalog um, highly recommend them I get I said all my seeds, but I get 99% of my seeds there. I do buy a few local seeds uh, for herbs and stuff like that. And uh, I have a big packet of this year's Baker's Creek take that uh, we'll take out in the garden. The target date for uh, the pumpkins in the garden is May 15th. And that's also my target date for the tomatoes, but I got a late start on the tomatoes. I didn't even get them planted. I, I can't remember the date. I want to say it was early, 1st of April, I think. So they're about three weeks old now and I'm behind on them and I don't think they're going to make the May 15th cutoff. So I'm not sure quite what I'm going to do there yet. But uh, <clears throat> excited to get these pumpkins in the ground. And uh, take a look at the difference between the pumpkin patches that we did last year and the patch that we're doing this year. And definitely learned a lot and definitely headed in the right direction i think all right so that is a quick rundown of what i got going on where we're at so far on our atlantic giant pumpkins and uh next time we take a look at that i'll hopefully have that all wrapped up and uh chicken proofed and we'll take another look at that and we'll uh definitely uh document when we put the pumpkins in the ground so so oh, appreciate you watching, and as always, if you like what we're doing, make sure you subscribe to Him Tight Homestead Cooney Coonies, and uh, we'll see you next time.